In my view, ecology, which is one thing, and urbanism are not mutually exclusive topics, but really interwoven and very interconnected. <clears throat> In Canada, we have a very um, conflicted idea about what the wilderness is. Um, <clears throat> it's a very powerful part of our mythology as a nation. So if you imagine people from around the world, what would they think about Canada? Uh, <clears throat> I think that much of um, one of the touchstones for me is the work of the Group of Seven, and I think probably many of you know the work. Um, some amazingly stunning paintings <clears throat> that really depicted the Canadian shield, this very rugged, raw landscape. If you think about Algonquin Park or Georgian Bay. <clears throat> and one of the things that distinguished the Group of Seven um, was that um, they actually spent time in this landscape. That's very much connected to what I would describe as a kind of mythology of the wilderness. Um, what I think is amazing is that, that when you look at the statistics, 80% um, of Canadians live in urban centers within one hour of the American border. So here we are thinking that we're this country of wilderness, and yet our day-to-day -day reality is totally different. We are an urban culture, <clears throat> and that we have to kind of maybe accept and understand this urbanity as maybe part of a new definition of how <clears throat> to be Canadian. Um, I would say that the shift from rural to urban living is what I would probably describe as a mass migration. <clears throat> it's, I would say that it is the pressing issue of our times. Um, whether you're, you live on the continent of Eurasia, Africa, or North America, <clears throat> the reverberation and impact of a population moving from rural or more wilderness areas, so rural being, meaning farming or kind of different ways of using the land, to urban is something that um, is impacting people around the world. And that this shift has had a radical kind of um, reverberations in our day-to-day -day lives and will continue to impact future generations. A um, hundred years ago in Canada, farmers depended on nature for their survival, knowing um, what the earth was made up of, uh, the, the w being able to read the weather, <clears throat> determine their fate. Um, nature was an integral part of daily living, um, both for the early Canadian settlers and for the Aboriginal people that were here before. <clears throat> This idea that <clears throat> culture is where the wisdom and the force of nature is really understood and experienced. Um, you, you don't need to talk about the environment because you're living the environment every day. And to read and understand the environment a <clears throat> hundred years ago would have been essential for your daily survival. We've kind of distanced ourselves from that. And so I would say for me, there's some really interesting questions. <clears throat> In a way, all traditions that really rise from using and uh, depending on the land have to be interested in questions of sustainability. <clears throat> because in a way, if you, if you um, believe in the future, I think you have to believe in sustainability. <clears throat> I would say both Catholic teaching and ecology are part of a kind of long-term vision. <clears throat> and they're really concerned with ensuring that the future generations to come can actually thrive and do well. You can't use up all your resources, you can't pollute the earth, and you can't heat up the atmosphere if you do not want to ensure the future for your children and your children's children. <clears throat> Just a different mindset. Um, <clears throat> so I think we need to demystify our preconceived notions of ur urbanism itself this simplistic idea that cities are bad and countryside is good really has to be debunked and, and changed in our mindset. <clears throat> Urban living is not only good, but it, it's actually a very responsible way to live. <clears throat> um, the footprint of the average urban Canadian amounts to, <clears throat> which is, a, is when you describe footprint, which is a kind of current term right now, <clears throat> it's the amount of land that is required from nature to support one person. 
<coughs> and right now, um, they, the, the statistics say that the average for a Canadian is 4.8 hectares. So if you imagine 220 meters by 220 meters, maybe about the size of three city blocks is one person. If we have two and a half million people in the greater Toronto area, you just start to imagine and multiply the amount of land that we take up just to live the kind of life that we live. Just our, our kind of going about our regular business. <clears throat> there are all kinds of statistics about what the average African uses, what the average uh, Chinese person in mainland China uses, and that in North America we far, <clears throat> you know, we have bigger footprints than everybody else. Um, and um, I think that one of the issues for Canada is that we have winter, which is a very, it, it's a very consumptive season uh, in terms of uh, the amount of energy and um, that we use. <clears throat> but I think we have to think and think inwardly about how we can um, change our footprint because it's again about how we um, look towards the future. Um, <clears throat> I would say increasingly um, density in cities can really lower <clears throat> our, our land use requirements, not only because we reduce the size of the built environment that we eat up, <clears throat> but really because um, we can actually change the way that we operate on a daily basis. That right now for me, um, the suburbs are maybe one of the biggest problems that we have. <clears throat> they, they, if you were to look at the footprint of an urban dweller, you know, within 10 blocks of where we're sitting in this pub right now, versus someone that lives in kind of the outskirts of Vaughan, what you would have to do on a daily basis to just get around and to buy a quart of milk or to do everyday things just requires that much more resources to do. Um, there were studies recently about the city of San Francisco and they found that when residential density was doubled in certain areas, private transportation, automobiles use was reduced by over 30%. <clears throat> residential heating requirements were reduced significantly because people lived in what are called multi-unit housing, um, either an apartment building or kind of more than an entrance with more than one dwelling unit, <clears throat> as opposed to a freestanding house. Um, I would say our challenge, all of us collectively, is to find ways to balance human consumption with nature's limited productivity in order to ensure that our communities are both are sustainable are sustainable both locally, regionally, and globally. We really don't have a choice about whether to do this, but we do ch we do have choices in how we do it. So I think that in a way, in my view, there's a bigger imperative. It's not whether we should think this way. It's more how our actions <clears throat> actually are kind of um, or the choices that we make speak about what we're concerned about and how we can um, make these choices wisely. So there's still time for us to make our communities more sustainable and at the same time improve both the quality of our individual lives but also build community at the same time. So in a way some of the kind of key elements for a sustainable community would be a certain ecological health using nature and resources without damaging them at the same time. I would say community health itself, which is about fostering social well-being through a certain promotion of fairness, equity, and cooperation. And then individual health, securing food and shelter, health care, education. <clears throat> and in a way, this idea of working to integrate environmental economic and social policies to create almost a kind of ecological integrity to how you proceed. So it's not just, you know, kind of <clears throat> green this and green that, but these other factors create a certain well-being that is that has to be balanced. Um, in order to make our communities more livable and sustainable, we need to work towards <clears throat> these changes in our personal lifestyle and at the same time developing and contributing to a kind of larger urban condition. So the kind of individual and the city are kind of working hand in hand in a way to build community.